Hey, and welcome gurus to this lesson where we're going through a demonstration of implementing a network security group. I'm Chase, one of your Azure training architects here at A Cloud Guru, a Pluralsight company. And in this lesson, we're going to go through a actual demonstration where we're going to be working with network security groups. We'll start off by discussing our case study scenario for the environment that we're going to set up and be working in for this demonstration. And then we'll go through the demonstration steps that we'll take to successfully follow along with this demonstration and complete the tasks at hand. And then we'll wrap up this lesson with some key takeaways for working with our NSGs. All right, let's talk about that case study scenario. So we have our Control Alt Suites organization. And this organization inside of their Azure environment, and in our case, the Cloud Sandbox for Azure, has multiple virtual networks. We have the Cake Spoke VNet1, a Hub VNet1 network, and a Spoke VNet2 network. And what we're going to be specifically diving in for this demonstration is into the Cake Hub VNet network. And this network is our main hub. And inside of this network, we're going to have our Hub subnet. And inside of this Hub subnet, we're going to have a virtual machine. Now, if all of that just seemed like a lot of information and it seems like it would be complicated to get set up, I want you to rest assured in knowing that I'm providing all the available resources for the setup in the resources section of this lesson. So everything that you need to set up these environments in the sandbox are made available when possible for each of these lessons, as you'll see as you move throughout this course. Now, let's talk about the demonstration steps that we're going to cover here for our Cake Hub VNet01 with our hub subnet 01 with a virtual machine running inside of it. We're gonna start off by creating a network security group. And this network security group, hub NSG01 that we're going to create, that's what mine will be named. You could name yours something else or you could name it the same thing. And then once we create this, we're gonna associate this NSG at the subnet level for our hub subnet 01 inside of our cake hub VNet, which means that any security rules on this hub NSG01 will impact the network interface of our virtual machine and other resources with network interfaces inside of this subnet. Then what we're going to do is we're going to create our security rules and play around with administering traffic for this subnet using our NSG. We'll create a deny SSH inbound rule from anywhere, but then we'll create and allow SSH inbound from our specific IP so that we can access this VM over SSH to administer it. And then we're going to create a deny internet outbound rule so that we can work with outbound rules. And this will help us understand some key things about NSGs, such as the stateful nature of NSG security rules. All right, gurus, I hope you're feeling ready because now at this point, we're gonna make our way into the Azure Cloud Playground on the website so that we can begin working with our resources. So. Let's make our way over to the Azure portal. All right, gurus, here we are at the Azure portal, and we're going to be using those credentials provided to us for our Azure Cloud Playground sandbox, and we're going to get signed into the Azure portal. So grab your credentials from the website, put those in, and as soon as we get our password, we'll be logged in to the user for our Azure Playground sandbox. We'll click yes to stay signed in, and now we're in the Azure portal. And the very first thing I want to cover is that, again, in the resources of this lesson, I provided the link that we need to be able to copy and paste this into the Cloud Shell to set up our demo environment. So we'll get started. And I'm going to show this this one time so that we understand how to set up the Cloud Shell. We'll come into the Azure portal. We'll click here on the Cloud Shell icon. And what we'll do is we're going to set this up as a PowerShell environment for the Cloud Shell. We'll click Show Advanced Settings here, and we're going to create a new storage account. Now, you have to name this something unique with the naming convention for storage accounts. So I'm going to name mine here the ACG Cloud Chase Demo STG for storage. And then I'm going to put a file share on that named Cloud Shell because we're mapping a file share storage account resource to our Cloud Shell. And I'll click Create Storage. And this is going to go off and create and map that storage account to this Cloud Shell instance so that we can use it. So using Movie Magic, we're going to skip ahead to when this Cloud Shell is provisioned 
so that we can copy and paste our resource link in to provision our environment. All right, Guru, so after a few moments, we're back and our Cloud Shell is finished setting up. And the first thing that we're going to want to do is make sure our cursor is in our Cloud Shell. We're going to type in clear. We're going to hit enter to clear up our display. And for your viewing experience, I'm going to change the font size here and the preferences of the Cloud Shell to medium. And I'm going to maximize this Cloud Shell window. Now, we're going to go to the resources link provided in the resources of this lesson. We're going to make sure to copy out the raw from the GitHub here. And we're going to bring this back over to our Cloud Shell. We're going to paste it in. And this is going to go off and create all the resources that we need to set up this demo environment. So we're going to use some movie magic to skip ahead when this PowerShell script is done setting up the environment so we can get started with our demonstration. All right, Guru, so we're back and our resources have finished setting up. As we'll see here, we have a public IP address that we're going to use. And this is the public IP address of that virtual machine that lives inside of our virtual network. Let's go ahead and copy this here. And what we're going to do is clear up our display. We're going to type SSH Azure user at and paste the public IP address and hit enter. And what we're going to be prompted is to accept the fingerprint. We'll type yes, hit enter. And now we've made an SSH connection into this virtual machine. Now, the reason we were able to do this is because this is using a basic public IP address. And this means that the VM is wide open because that's the nature of using a basic SKU public IP. It's wide open and we need to secure it with a network security group. So what we're going to do is we're going to exit out of the VM here and then we'll minimize our cloud shell here. And what we'll see are all of the resources that were created by our PowerShell script in setting up this environment. We see we have our virtual network and we have our VM inside of that hub virtual network. So we'll click into that VM here and we'll quickly just go to the networking tab on the blade here. And what we'll see is that we have no network security group associated with this virtual machine at the NIC level or at the subnet level. So this is the part where we're going to be creating a network security group. Come up to the search bar here and we'll type in network security group and we'll select it from services and we'll click create. And this is going to bring us into the creation process. We'll minimize that portion of the blade there. We'll select our resource group and we're going to give this a name. Remember, we're going to call this our hub NSG01. And then next we'll configure our region. Make sure that you select the same region where your other resources are deployed so that you can associate your network security group with those resources. In my case, this is the correct region. So I'll click review and create. It's going to validate the deployment of this resource. And once it passes validation, we'll click create. And it's going to go off and create this NSG for us. And the next step we're going to be focused on is associating that NSG with our hub subnet inside of the hub virtual network so that we can test creating security rules and how that impacts that virtual machine that exists inside of that subnet. So it looks like this resource has completed. So we'll go to the resource. Now we're inside of this network security group. We'll go down to the blade under settings on the left hand side and click subnets. And here's where we can choose to associate our network security group. We could also associate a network interface, but in our case, we're gonna use a subnet. So we'll click associate. We're gonna select our virtual network, the hub VNet, and then our subnet, we wanna associate it with the hub subnet and we'll click okay. And this is going to save that association between our NSG and our subnet. And we now see that association here. And the next thing that we need to do is create our first security rule. Under settings here, we see we have our inbound and outbound security rules. We'll click into inbound. And we see we have our default security rules here. Now we're gonna override these default security rules and we're going to add a security rule here. We're going to use our source here and our source options can be anywhere an IP address specifically, a service tag, which we talked about. We have service tags that represent a collection of IP addresses like the internet, virtual network, which is our private address space, Azure Load Balancer. We also have application security group if we want to provide that extensibility that we'll learn more about later. So for now, we're going to select any because we want to deny all SSH traffic from anywhere. We'll leave the source port range for the ephemeral ports as an asterisk to specify any port 
The destination is going to be any, but it could be any IP address, service tag, or application security group. We'll leave it at any. And the service here is going to be SSH. We could specify HTTP, RDP, but in our case, we're using SSH, and that's going to be port 22 here. We see it's already pre-selected, and it pre-selected our protocol, which is TCP. And then we're going to select our action here, and we're going to specify a deny action. We're going to give this a priority of 200 here, and our options are between 100 and 4,096. And we're going to name this rule here. We'll give it the name of deny SSH inbound. And then we'll click add, and it's going to add this security rule here for us. And when this rule's finished provisioning, we'll come into the Cloud Shell here. And what we're going to find out is if we tab up to then try and connect into our VM via its public IP address, we now won't be able to connect. And that's because we've denied this traffic. Now let's go ahead and hit control C to cancel out of this. And what we're going to do real fast is we're going to get the public IP address of our cloud shell. I'm going to make sure to provide the link to this resource here for you, but we're going to grab this. We're going to paste this in, and this is going to get the current public IP address of our cloud shell instance and return this for us. And this is what we're going to use to create our second security rule where we're going to allow traffic from our cloud shell instance for SSH. If you see this here, just go ahead and scroll over to the right to get back to where you were. And we're going to click add to add that new security rule. We're going to specify the same source um, as an IP address of our cloud shell instance. And it's going to be a slash 32. So we'll paste that in, put slash 32. We're going to use SSH. And then this is going to be an allow action. But the important part here is we have to give it a lesser priority so that this rule is ordered first when evaluating traffic. We'll specify 150 and we're going to call this our allow SSH inbound. And then once we've given it that name, we'll click add and it's going to add the security rule here for us. And we'll come back into our cloud shell instance. We'll clear up our display here. And as soon as this rule is done creating, we'll be able to tab up to our SSH command using the arrow key and hit enter and connect into our virtual machine as we see here. Now, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're going to quickly just run this command here, sudo apt get update. And we see we have connectivity outbound to the internet to update packages on this machine. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna minimize the cloud shell. We're gonna scroll back over here. We're gonna to go to our outbound security rules and we're gonna mess with our outbound traffic here. We're gonna click add and we're going to be denying internet outbound. So we're going to specify a source of any and the port range can be any as well. The destination is going to be any for the internet. And we optionally could have used a service tag and specify the internet specifically, but any is fine for our case. And for service, we'll leave it at custom. And for our destination port range here, we're gonna use an asterisk to specify any traffic outbound. And then we're going to specify any protocol. And this is gonna be a deny action. We'll leave the priority as it is by default. And we're gonna call this our deny internet outbound to override that default security rule that allows internet outbound. We'll click add, and this is gonna add that rule and once it's finished adding this security rule, we'll come over here to the cloud shell. We'll clear up our display and we'll run the same command, sudo apt get update to update our packages on this Ubuntu VM. And what we're gonna see is it's gonna fail to connect outbound to the internet to update these packages. So we see how security rules can impact how traffic is impacted for our virtual networks. All right, gurus, let's make our way back to the slides for a wrap up of this lesson. All right, gurus, congratulations on completing the demonstration. If you followed along, the key takeaways for this lesson here are to understand that network security groups secure traffic for virtual networks. And as we saw in our demo, we need to plan out how we're gonna make those associations either at the subnet level or at the network interface level because we need to plan that security for our network, especially when we have multiple resources. And we also need to think about when we're creating security rules, how we want to filter traffic by specifying things like priority as we saw in this demonstration. Okay, gurus, that is all for me for now. Thanks so much for joining me in this lesson, and I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.